Hey everybody, welcome to one in a series of videos about the Zenobia Award. Now what is the Zenobia Award? Well, I'll have some links in the description below the video, but the Zenobia Award is a design award put together by various folks across the board game industry, and it's targeted towards marginalized designers and also topics for games. So all of these games that I'm gonna be showing you on these videos are from different historical contexts and different time periods. Now at the time of recording this video, the Zenobia Award has just announced and narrowed down their selection of finalists. And I saw this announcement and I looked at some of the games that they had announced and a lot of them look really, really interesting to me. So I reached out to uh, the folks at the Zenobia Award and they put me in touch with the designers of all of the finalists. And I've had a chance over the last several weeks to demo some games, do some interviews, do some play testing. And so I'm gonna bring you uh, some showcase of some of those finalists. Now, this stuff, if you're watching this in the future, the game may have changed. If the game eventually gets published, I'm sure it'll look a lot different. All of these videos are gonna be showcasing the game on Tabletop Simulator. So again, it, things might have changed and there may or may not be links to the Tabletop Simulator mod directly. That may change in the future as the designers you know, feel differently about maybe showcasing the game in its various different states. So the game we're gonna talk about now is From Darkness to Light by designer Sharia Ayundini. And you can read here, during Indonesia's struggle for independence, manage your school, graduate girls from different islands as politicians, fighters, patrons, or teachers, advance education for women, and fight for the nation's freedom. So From Darkness to Light takes place in the late 1800s, early 1900s, and it's very much focused on the education and development of young women. And so what you're gonna be doing is running a school and hiring teachers, uh, educating uh, girls in various different kinds of disciplines, and then sort of seeing the fruits of your labor in a lot of different ways. So they may come back as teachers, they may become part of the revolution, they may become politicians or patrons and so on. And as, as we look here on the tabletop simulator mod, you can see a few different kind of boards out here. So the main board out here in the middle is these various different islands and these different colored meeples that you can see here are various different girls from the different islands and so what you want to try to do is educate as many uh, girls from a variety of islands as possible but also get them into a different variety of careers and educate a wide breadth of individuals here so the game takes place over various different phases it's played over six rounds and each round has eight stages. And the first thing you're gonna do is hire teachers here. So you can see here is the teacher deck. And you can see a few different things here. If we zoom into this teacher here, you can see on the upper left is kind of the cost. And on the right is a symbol for kind of the type of education that this teacher is capable of. And so there'll be a giant deck of teachers here. You can see as we get to the later uh, rounds here, there'll be a little bit more cost, but they'll start to award more victory points. And they can also educate a different number of, of girls. So this one here, on the, you can see on the bottom right, she can educate four, whereas these early teachers here can educate only one. So one thing you're gonna do here is recruit and pay for different teachers, and you'll start to put them in the various different uh, sort of types of school that you have. And this main board here is your main player board. So you can see you've got endowment here. This is some income that you're gonna get every round. You'll start the game with some random books, and these books will tie into the different sort of subjects that you can teach. And here you have some starting do it, so this is money. And then you have your school's reputation here. So the first phase is recruiting these different teachers here. And you'll put these up here like this. And so you can start to have a number of teachers and you'll wanna keep them splayed. So their right icon, this is what they can teach. So this little uh, bird symbol here it, it indicates that they can teach a politician. And so you can have a number of teachers inside of here. And when you take the teacher, you can see the little meeple icon there you can take girls from that any available islands. And these islands will start to unlock as the game uh, progresses. So right now we're playing a two player game. And so only these two islands can unlock. But as we start to uh, educate fighters, then we can start to build bridges to from one island to another. And so see, now we've sort of decided that we're gonna be responsible for two different uh, girls. So you don't wanna take on uh, more girls than you can educate because then you're gonna lose reputation there. And so you also have here students. So for example, here, maybe we'll take this student here. And so she, she will come in here 
And I should say this is the next step after the hiring teacher phase is you want to start to recruit students here. And the students have a variety of icons as well. So you can see this one here. She wants to be a politician and this one is dreaming of being a fighter. This one here is dreaming of being a patron. You can see the kind of the little money bag up there. Whereas this particular student, she's open. So there's a little question mark on the upper right. And there's a requirement there for her education. You can see on the left, you want two different colored books. So she would not be great for us right now because we started the game off with two like colored books. Whereas this student here, she wants a blue book and then any other colored book. So that would be a little bit better of a deal there. But after you've done the recruit student phase, you will have some books up here that you can buy or you can even buy blindly from the bag itself like this. So you can go and buy a different number of books here and try to satisfy kind of the educational requirements of these different students. So after you've hired teachers, recruited students and bought any books that you need, then you can kind of go and then arrange the cards in your classrooms to kind of get them lined up so that you are able to satisfy all of the different students that you have recruited. Now it is worth noting that there are actually heroes and these are real uh, folks from Indonesian history here that have their own requirements, but they also have a lot of different special abilities and things. So you take a little bit of a risk here because you'll actually lose two reputation uh, for each kind of round that they stick around that you're not able to satisfy their needs. So you can see Christina here, she requires three green books and actually two money to recruit, but she'll uh, reward victory points at the end of the game for fighters and she has a special ability you can see in the middle in the white box there it says christina participates in every battle she does not secure any island connections so you can keep her around up here in the battleground which we'll talk about uh, in a minute now for every student that you can satisfy the requirement for and graduate you'll get a reputation point now if a student sticks around you actually lose a reputation point but again uh, the heroes you will lose two reputation points if you decide to take them on instead of a normal student now, once you graduate a student here, you can do a few different things with it based on what type of uh, schooling they had. So one thing you could do is you maybe you could put it in the battleground if you trained a fighter. And so players will contribute to uh, the battle here. And so you have a die here, which will determine the outcome of the battle. And I should say you will actually add uh, more dice based on the number of students in here. And so you're gonna roll them all and as long as you get more wins and losses, um, the designer actually told me this part is like still kind of under development to kind of, you know, get this kind of balanced out right. Uh, but then you can have a reward for that. And the key part of what you'll do is after a battle, you'll take uh, one of the students here and you have little discs and stuff here to assign um, your player color under the bottom there. So you kind of know who's who in the, uh, in the idea is that in the, physical game this will actually be like a little graduation hat in your player color that you will put on top of the character there and so if i put this player here they will link sumatra to kalimantan here so he, now you will this is sort of unlocked now the girls from this island that you can get access to and start to educate them because you want to again have an, a variety of these for in-game scoring now the other thing you might do with your student let's just take her off of here is you might become a patron here and if you become a patron, you will start to place them on these little spots here. So you'll get different rewards. Now, when you do that, you also will get uh, your endowment will start to go up as well. And then um, these little blocks, so you can see, kind of see this top rectangle here will be open at the beginning. And then after you you can see down here at the bottom. So after you have three occupied spaces here, then the next cluster opens and so on. So the, the better rewards will start to unlock over the course of the game. So if you make a patron uh, student here and they graduate and they're a patron, then they'll go into here. Now a politician can go over to here and start to unlock different special abilities uh, for the player that does this, but also you start to um, unlock more slots for more student cards to get uh, you know into the deeper part of the deck here to get better students with you know, more versatility and more rewards and so on like that. And then you also get to take the special ability uh, over here. For example, here, if you graduate a teacher, you can get uh, some extra money. Now, speaking of teachers, you can take and move uh, the student up to be uh, a teacher at this point, and they can start to teach their aspirations. So if we look over here as a better example, for example, uh, this student here could become a political teacher. So she could you know, take what she's learned and then start to teach future students. So there's a little bit of an engine building kind of aspect here into uh, investing in your school a little bit. 
Now, like I said, the game is played over six rounds. And then at the end of each round, you're going to deal with these different various uh, events that are going to come up. As well, you sh I should say, you do have these round modifiers here. So, for example, this one is when you make a connection, which we look back over here, when you make a connection from one island to another, you'll get a bonus of two money when you do that. And there's a there's this nice stack of these as well. So if you win a battle, you get some extra money. So these will kind of change up uh, the course of the game there. But you play over the six rounds. And again, what you're kind of going for, what the end game bonus is, is having a variety of girls educated, a variety of different types of, you know, occupations that you have uh, graduated these women into. And you also get extra points for where you are on your reputation track, any special abilities and end game ability cards that you might have gotten here uh, at the end of the game. But again, the overall objective is to try to educate a, a, as diverse a group of women as possible and in a as diverse uh, sort of set of occupations uh, as possible. So that is from Darkness to Light, and there's a lot of things I really like about this game. So there's a, there's a lot of actual like layers here. So the main thing that you got is your efficiency and the economy of your school and trying to keep that engine up and running, keeping your reputation up, because sometimes you have to spend reputation, kind of like staking your reputation. Uh, if you take some risks and you know, maybe try to, uh, you pull in certain teachers or certain hero students and that kind of thing. And that kind of works alongside or in parallel with sort of the historical activities uh, that are kind of going on on the rest of the board. Uh, so you have that sort of engine building thing from a mechanical uh, perspective, but then you're trying to sort of latch on to some different sort of combos that are available out there in terms of like scoring points and, you know, being in, invested in some different battles, uh, trying to, you know, get some, unlock some special abilities, unlock different students, uh, you know, have the politicians and that kind of thing, go to the patron board and that kind of thing. So there's a lot of like little sort of point salad kinds of things that are going on here. Uh, but you can really see kind of the visual arc of the transformation of the islands in terms of, you know, the battles evolving, unlocking more islands to get access to, you know, different students. And then, you know, the different events and stuff that you have to deal with at the end of the round. So that's a really kind of interesting thing. And I got to say the, the flavor text on some of the cards and everything is really cool. And it, that does really, in this case, I think, add to the theme of the game where you can kind of see, oh, okay, this person did that. I never, never knew this person. I never, you know, didn't know this kind of thing happened. And so in that sort of context, it gives you a real good sense of kind of the swirling environment sort of around you outside the school. And in a sense, really, for me, uh, I felt like that was kind of an interesting sort of sanctuary to, to be in. So in the first part of the phase of the round, you've, you're kind of managing students and doing that kind of day-to-day uh, -day sort of, you know, kind of like a clerical or mundane thing, but you still get the sense of, you know, trying to provide the best environment for the best education. And then you're kind of sending them out to the outside world to deal with all of these different kind of things uh, that you're interacting with. And you're trying to do it again in a way in the context of the game to get the most points at the end of the game and, you know, kind of grab those different opportunities. Um, so you have this kind of real kind of retreat at the beginning of the round, you know, kind of getting the teachers and students all set up. But then, you know, taking opportunities and where you kind of send them and what kind of awards and abilities you're trying to chase after uh, that kind of will spiral back onto you. So it's a very, very interesting game. Uh, I definitely hope folks will take a look at it. Again, if the Tabletop Simulator link is below, uh, feel free to check it out and uh, definitely keep your eyes out for this one. Uh, really interesting theme, really fun gameplay, lots of cool combos and that kind of stuff that are possible uh, with a nice kind of uh, engine building thing kind of underneath the covers there. So that's from light, Darkness to Light. Uh, thank you.